It's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. Even when live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatrick. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Peter. What, what's doing? going on? How's human we're alive? Oh, well, we're we've, out there. We've been, we're, we've we're busy. ready. I'm we have. Busy. We, we've been super busy. Andrew has taken part in two updates, uh, not just one, but two updates in the last couple of days. There are, firstly, we have re released the long-awaited update <laughs> to Keysoft that we uh, was featured prominently on a previous episode of Humanware Live. Um, so Keysoft, the new update is out. If you received the notification, you I saw many people on Facebook had updated. I've gotten a few notes uh, as well. Um, definitely want to update your Braille Note Touch Plus. If you have not received the notification, maybe you have it turned off, you want to go to all applications and then open key updater where you can update Keysoft. All right, Andrew, what is the other update? Well, the other update is that we've updated the Humanware Buddy application. Uh, so we're now on a new build, build 1.7. 1, 1. So if you haven't had a, a notification on your iPhone or tablet or Android device, then uh, visit the store, visit the Play Store, iOS store, update the new version. What this version brings is notifications. Um, so these are allowing uh, Humanware to send you notifications to keep you up to date with what is happening. Uh, so updates such as uh, notifying you that there is a new version of software. Uh, maybe there's a new webinar that we've got in place or new prize giveaway thing. So if you want to stay updated with what's, what's happening with Humanware, then uh, update your Humanware Buddy app. And you can, you can absolutely turn those notifications off. Um, if you don't want to receive notifications, there is a section in the app where you can look at recent notifications. And also, it gives you the opportunity to click links. Um, I know it was requested, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could register for these HW, you know, Humanware Live webinars directly from the app. And now we can because if, with the notification, you can say this week's webinars are as follows and there can be a link to register. So you can click that link and come to our registration page. Um, in addition to any anything else we want to put out there. So we will we are not here to abuse our privileges. Um, I am not uh, advocating for updates every day. Andrew, we're not the National Hockey League, right? We don't put updates out at 8 a.m. every single morning. Uh, no, we're certainly going to be uh, <laughs> you know, sending notifications wisely, certainly. Right. So it's, it's definitely something that we've, we're excited about um, when new content is available, um, possibly, you know, new documentation, um, let you know what's going on with, with webinars and upcoming events. So push notifications, um, we're excited to have and stay tuned because there is a whole new piece of the HW Buddy app that we're looking at implementing as well as we move forward. So we're not done, much like we're not done updating Keysoft. Um, we already have teams at work on future things and, and we're going to keep bringing updates forward. So please stay tuned and we will, we will keep bringing those updates. Andrew, I need uh, an operating budget so I can update the Humanware intro for this webinar. I keep threatening to do it. And I never get it done. So maybe that'll be something we can have for next week. If I can get it. We're, we're, we're like in, we're still sheltering in place technically, but it's very, yes. uh, it's very phased. <laughs> so we're phased we need to change it. <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta get that thing updated. So one of these, this could be the the final blow for the uh, Humanware intro. I will say it will be just as exciting. I'm gonna whoop it up. We're gonna we're gonna keep it <laughs> gonna keep it fired up. But welcome to Humanware Live, everybody. Um, today we're going to be talking about embossing and printing. Um, I'm going to talk about how we can emboss, emboss to Generation 5 embossers, such as the Juliet 120, the Romeo 60, um, the Index V5, Basic Basic D, your various, any any sort of five generation embossers that, that are running under the Index and enabling brands. Um, I'm going to talk about how we can emboss via Bluetooth to those embossers from our BrailleNote Touch Plus. Also going to show you how you can emboss directly from a thumb drive, because 
What's very neat is these embossers have built-in braille translation. Um, there are many ways to emboss. It's no longer completely entirely necessary to have a braille translator to emboss to these new generation embossers and that's very very cool. Um, there are a, a myriad of ways to emboss so we're going to look at that. Then I'm going to toss it over to Mr. Andrew and he is going to talk about printing and Andrew you're going to talk about Wi-Fi direct printing right? I believe and I think he's also going to talk about some other sort of printing but i'm not sure yeah that's me yeah so sorry i was on mute then so uh yeah i'm going to talk about various ways of printing so wi-fi direct is one of them uh also discuss about how you can uh you can print by usb as well perfect all right so without any further ado i'm going to share my screen now i will say uh the embosser that i'm using so the the, the embosser does have self-voiced menus I am going to have to almost kiss the embosser to get you to hear it through my, my headset that I'm wearing. So you're going to have to bear with me. The quality might be a little low, but I'll talk about and talk through what I'm doing um, and you will hear the speech output. So I'm gonna share my screen and we are going to share the connect application. Give me one moment. There we go. Every, every day something very slight changes with Zoom uh, over the past several months and Start. sometimes things get a little funky. So I am going to mute my speech. Space. Speech on demand. All right. Now, what we're going to do, we are going to talk about Bluetooth embossing. And I am going to do this from the BrailleNote Touch Plus. The first thing I need to do though is, I'm uh, again, I am using a Juliet 120. This will apply to any of the index fifth generation embossers, so your, your FanFold, your Railbox, your, um, your uh, sorry, your basic D, as well as your Everest. This will also apply to your Romeo and Juliet new embossers, so the Romeo 60 and the Juliet 120. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how to enable Bluetooth, so how to make your embosser discoverable and then we'll go in and pair to it from our BrailleNote Touch Plus and we'll see how we can emboss via Bluetooth. There are multiple ways of embossing. You could emboss via Wi-Fi. Um, you can certainly do that in various ways from, from an iPhone or from, from you know, there are many ways to do that. Um, you can also emboss directly from a thumb drive, which I will be covering. But the first thing is we're gonna make our embosser discoverable. And to do that, I am going to, so if, if you are feeling the buttons on your embosser, they are labeled in Braille. But in case you've never felt one of these before, across the top panel, you have a series of buttons um, and they're roughly in, in kind of a, it is sort of a grouped pattern. You have from left to right, you will first encounter as you move from left to right, two buttons, um, one above the other. And you have the online and the offline buttons. And directly to the right of that is the feed button, which controls your paper in, paper out adjustment. But to the right of those three buttons, that grouping of three, you will find two buttons directly above each other, above and below. The top one being menu, the bottom one being help. Now, the menu button is where we want to go in order to mess with the layouts, in order to print demo files, in order to set up um, Bluetooth or mess with various settings. All of that lives in the menu, which is it's very aptly named because it definitely would makes sense to go into a menu to change lots of those settings. The help key reads your system information, um, the current firmware you're running. It can also do other things depending on various key combinations you push in conjunction with help um, or, or in you know, sequentially with other keys. But for today, we are going to come in and make this embosser discoverable. So again, we're, we're going to set up Bluetooth so that we can emboss to it from our BrailleNote Touch Plus. We also could emboss via Bluetooth from a Windows computer. Um, or, or something like that. We cannot emboss via Bluetooth from an iOS device. And this is a limitation of Apple. When you wanna print from Apple, you do so via AirPrint. You do not Bluetooth print from an Apple device. That is not a possibility on an iPhone. I know you would like it. I would like it too, but it does not exist. And that is something that Apple can explain at a future date and time. So we are going to make this, discoverable. So I'm going to press my menu key. Um, and again, I'm leaning over my embosser pretty much on top of it. My voice might change a little based on the fact that I'm 
kind of hugging this thing, but I'm going to press menu. Open menu mode. And we hear it says open menu mode. And I hope everyone can hear that. I'm going to press my down arrow. So there are four directional arrows with a select button just to the right of the menu key. I'm going to press down. And the first option says print. We don't want to print. We're going to press down again. Braille layout. We hear Braille layout. And this is where you can customize multiple layouts if you have multiple students um, or multiple use cases. One might be for eight and a half by 11 paper and maybe 40 lines per 40 characters per line with a three character binding margin. Then you might end in, in grade two and you might have a student that needs eight and a half by 11 paper with uncontracted Braille and a different character set and so on. So you can customize Braille layouts, but I'm pressing my down arrow again to get to communication. And this is where we want to go to mess with Bluetooth, to mess with and, and manipulate Wi-Fi and various settings. To enter this menu, I will press my right arrow. So again, we move, we use the down arrow to get to communication. We press our right arrow to enter communication. USB. The very first thing we hear is USB. This is where we go to safely remove a USB thumb drive if we have one connected. I'm gonna press my down arrow. Manage Wi-Fi network. All right, this has to do with our Wi-Fi networks. Again, we're not talking about that Right now, I'm going to press my down arrow uh, again. Wizard for wired networks. This has to do with press wired okay networks. So it says press OK to start. This is wired networks. This would be if I have a local area network cable plugged into the back of my embosser and I'm wanting to set that up. Pressing down arrow again. Manage Bluetooth. Hey, oh, that's what we want. Manage Bluetooth. Manage Bluetooth. So I'm going to press OK to enter this menu. Set Bluetooth. Now this first option says set Bluetooth power. This refers to if Bluetooth is on or off. I'm gonna press my down arrow again. Make printer discoverable. And this is exactly what we want. It says make printer discoverable. And when I press okay, my embosser, my Juliet 120 becomes visible to my BrailleNote Touch Plus or to my computer. Going to press okay, and I'm gonna come back to my desk and it says scan from your device and select the embosser. So we're going to do that now on our Braille Note Touch Plus. Going to enter the menu by pressing Q with enter. Set oh, night light schedule, up. tint screen amber right. to help you fall now, asleep. I'm going to press the letter C to come into connected devices. Connected devices. Press enter here. Connected devices, Bluetooth cast. Connected devices. Bluetooth, not connected. All right, connected. it says Bluetooth not connected. I'm going to press enter. Bluetooth, visible as Brilliant by 32 slash Braille no touch 130. Here's my serial number, so it tells me what I'm visible as, the name of my device. I'm going to press the letter P. Phone, fun and phone. such, pair new and device. Now I press P again and we get to pair new device. I'm going to press enter. Pair new device. Visible as Brilliant by 32 slash Brilliant. and enter to mute my speech. And now my list of available devices will be here. I'm going to use my next thumb key. Available and devices. Now I see progress bar. My embosser. We hear it said progress bar, which means that it is currently searching or seeking nearby devices. Bluetooth. Apple TV. Bluetooth. 5800 Bluetooth. La Bose Micros right. Tablets and it is Bluetooth not here yet, but that doesn't mean it won't show up. So we heard three items here as I use my next thumb key. I have an Apple TV. I have a few of them. It sees one of them. Um, there's some other device, which I think is one of my a printer that I have here, as well as um, a Bose Micro Sound Link. What I'm going to do, if you don't see your device right away, what I suggest you do. Bluetooth, 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 is available press device. Your previous, uh, press your back button, I'm sorry, or space with E. Bluetooth. And activate the pair new device option again. Phone, pair new device. Enter. We're going to look pair at new device. Visible as Brilliant available device. Bluetooth. 5000 Bluetooth. What I might Tablets do if I don't Bluetooth see it. address. Every now and then you won't see it. And what you'll want to do is you're going to re, we're going to re make the printer discoverable again, which we may do, but I'm going to give this another chance. Sometimes yeah. it won't see it depending on what I have here. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, it seems like you've already got one paired. Um, I think that's probably why it may not be coming up. So if you look on your paired list, it's uh, Juliet's you know, present. I, 
I forgot it, but I, I wonder if I didn't forget it the second time because I, I definitely uh, forgot it and paired it this morning to make sure I was going to have this nice and well rehearsed. But of course, <laughs> I could have forgotten to actually pair it again, which is a bummer because what would happen is when we find our embosser in this list, we press enter on it and we're going to get the ability it, the, on your embosser, you will have a message that says, make sure the number is the same on the device, which you don't need to worry about. You simply need to press, and I just got a printer no longer discoverable message on my embosser. But what will happen is you will get an, a dialogue that pops up on your touch and on your embosser that says, make sure the number is the same. You want to press OK on your embosser and activate the pair button on your touch plus. The same steps will apply for your original Braille note touch. And then you are able to easily send files via Bluetooth. And if you need these instructions in text form, we can certainly get them to you. Um, we have step-by-step -step instructions for both the touch and the touch plus uh, for pairing this. And I have apparently forgotten that I have one already connected. So if Bluetooth. I look at my, my already paired devices. Bottom, pair phone. Fun settings, Bluetooth, Juliet 120 20,189. That's which tells me I did not actually, I forgot to, um, I definitely forgot to forget the device, which is funny when you forget to forget, right, Andrew? I forgot to forget it the device after it, it I happens it. at times, especially when we so, do demonstrations. It's, uh, that's good. So if you've ever forgotten to forget something, uh, today is the day that you saw someone do it. Now, had I had actually forgotten that device, it would have showed up in that paired new device list, but I definitely forgot to do that. So we do see that it's paired and it will show up. Once it's paired, it will show up under your available, you know, devices here. So again, set it phone pair have devices. A paired devices option and that's where you see what is paired. Right now my phone is paired. It is called fun and such. Uh, my embosser is paired and I think I have a speakers or various headphones or things have been paired and unpaired over the years and they will all show up in this list if they are currently paired. Now to send a file over to your embosser via Bluetooth, we find the file. So again, the easiest way to do this, I'm gonna to come to the main menu. Main menu. We Con talked a lot about sharing files earlier in Humanware Live way back, probably 20 something episodes ago, but I'm going to press the letter F and open the file manager. File manager, key files, key files. Alarms right. folder. I am in key files. Again, we talked a lot about how we manage key files. Remember pressing D as in drive. D with space moves you up to drive selection. I'm going to find my file. In this case, it is on the storage drive. Again, we went through all of this in, in previous episodes, how you locate files and manage files and folders. I open the storage drive. I'm going to come down to my science folder. Science folder. Press enter. Science test December 17th. Docs. Now, this is a DOCX file. So we can send DOCX, text PDF, or our uh, BRF documents over to the embosser, right? Those will work, no problem. Um, those don't, you again, don't need to have a Braille translator to send these over. These, this, it is a DOCX file, but the embosser itself will translate the document and turn it into Braille. If you're looking for advanced formatting, you still probably want to use something like Duxbury or, or Braille 2000 or whatever you may use if you're doing things with spatial alignment and so on. This is a rough translation, so please keep that in mind. Now, when I want to share this document, again, I find it in key files. I open the context menu, so space with the letter M as in menu. Context menu. Mark slash unmark. Backspace with L. Right, we hear all of our good old commands and shortcuts and all of that. I'm going to press the letter S to move to share. Share. I'm going to press enter. Share with OneDrive. Use a different app. Now, if anyone attended last week, you know that I talked about OneDrive. So again, that's why it says share with OneDrive because that was the last app that I was sharing with um, when I was doing this last week. Now, if I want to share with a different app, I'm going to find it in the list. In this case, it is Bluetooth. So I'm going to press my next thumb key. Key mail. Send to Zoom buddies. Right, and we'll see different options here. What I can do is find Bluetooth in this list. And we're list. going to press enter. Or share with OneDrive just on once. Always use a different key mail. Send chat to Bluetooth. Canvas. Bluetooth. 
right? So here's Bluetooth. I press enter. Choose Bluetooth device, phone, fun and such. Bluetooth, Juliet 120-20,189. I'm, I'm in a list where I could choose a device. You heard it was the first one was fun and such. I pressed my next thumb key, found Juliet, followed by my serial number. So Juliet 120-20189, which is my serial number. I press enter. Key files. Sending file to Juliet 120-20189. Science test December 17th. Docs. And what happens Bluetooth is... Bluetooth share. Send science test December 17th. It will send this to my own Docs. Now, it will be loud, and I don't really want right now to, to have it smash through an entire uh, document, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop that from happening, but at this point, your document will emboss it will be sent right to your embosser and it will emboss. So you will be good to go. This is very straightforward. Again, you do this through the Bluetooth side, which means you need to be within 20, 30 feet. You can certainly emboss via Wi-Fi. We can look at that another time. You can certainly emboss from the web app, which is how you can mess with the embosser settings. You can emboss in different ways. This is one option, so please keep that in mind. I really like it because it's straightforward and I don't have to configure a Wi-Fi connection. You just have to pair these devices one time. As long as you're in the room, boom, away you go. Um, and I didn't mean to rhyme that, but it did. So your, your win for hearing me rhyme if you're in the room, boom. Now, the other piece of this, I wanna show you how to emboss from a thumb drive. So maybe you have, I don't know, you, you don't feel like using Bluetooth or you just have a document on a thumb drive. I know I've been at many a conference and someone will say, Peter, could you please emboss this for me? It's some notes for a speech or for a presentation. Um, and I'll say, sure, if you can put it on a thumb drive, I'm happy to do that. Um, as long as it's not super long and won't drive the convention hall crazy, I can emboss a page or two. And I do it directly from a thumb drive. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Now, uh, in the back of the embosser uh, on the Juliet 120, um, and on, on any of these five generation of bosses, they will have USB ports here, but I'm going to plug my USB drive in and I'm going to open the menu. So again, we, we know that to open the menu, we push the button that says menu, um, which is on, on our, our embosser control panel. So as I described earlier, I'm going to press menu. And when I do, we're gonna close the menu mode because I was in there before, but I'm gonna open it now. So menu, will open my menu mode. And now my previous document's gonna print because I had stopped it, but I forgot to actually stop it. So you do get to hear my embosser just cruise away. This is embossing something that I created and thankfully it wasn't very long and I did that on purpose. But this embossed a, that science test document that I was trying to keep everyone from hearing emboss, but that's okay, life goes on. Now we're gonna talk about how we can emboss from a thumb drive. So again, once I enter the menu, the first option when I press my down arrow will say print. All right, we can hear the fan of the embosser as well. The fan is running to keep everything cool, make those solenoids nice and cool so they don't overheat or do something crazy. But I hear print and I'm gonna press my right arrow to enter the print menu. We hear that it says print previous document. So this would be if I wanted to print that file again that I just printed, which I don't. I'm going to press my, my down arrow and show you the options in this menu. Print demo files. So print demo files. This would be if I wanted to make sure my embosser works. There are some pretty neat demos of graphics and that bones of the hand or a maze or some different things here. I'm going to press my down arrow again. Print All right, this would be if you want to print the Braille manual. Uh, again, definitely want to have some time to do that and want to be somewhere that's not going to be disruptive. I'm going to press my down arrow again. Print test document. The test document, so print test document. That is going to be the document that contains your Wi-Fi information, you know, your embosser information and so on. Uh, just like a, like a printer test page. I'm going to press down arrow again. Print and we do not see my thumb drive, so I'm going to reinsert it here because it should be here and it's not. So hold on one moment. We are going to reinsert the thumb drive. And if all works well, it should be showing up here in this area. So give me one second, everybody. All right, we're going to give this a try. 
I've reinserted the thumb drive. Hopefully, I'm going to open my menu. Open menu We're going to come to print. Beautiful. And now we have an option that says print from USB memory stick in this print menu. So when we want to activate that, we press OK and it will open the thumb drive and show us our folders or our files. Now, if you have a folder, so again, you're going to move up and down through these lists. If you have a folder, pressing right arrow will open that particular folder. I have a document here called a short bio. So it's just a short Peter Tusick bio that sometimes I send when I'm doing a conference presentation and such that I'm gonna find. So I'm gonna use my up arrow or down arrow to move through my files. They are alphabetically done here. I'm gonna come up and find this. And we hear it say a short bio.docx. Again, this will do BRF files, DOCX files. Um, if you have text PDF documents, I'm going to press okay and it will emboss this file. We're going to get a message once I press OK that the document, the selected document will now be printed. The selected document will now be printed and away it goes. So again, I'm going to let this finish. And that's, that's a good page document. But what we heard is it said the selected document would now be printed and it ran it through. So it's just, again, a DOCX. That's a Microsoft Word file that I'm just printing straight off of a thumb drive. Now I can read it in Braille. The Braille translation that it's using is all determined by the Braille layout that you are currently running. And we can look at that at a future time. How do you set up a Braille layout um, for various students? All right, at this point of the program, I am going to toss it virtually digitally over to Mr. Andrew, who's going to talk about some printing. And um, hopefully that was helpful in terms of, again, just a couple of ways, not, not the only ways, but a couple of ways of embossing. Thanks, Peter. Uh, and I just want to extend on to uh, something that you mentioned about the, um, the settings within the, the embosser. So you mentioned that all the translations happen on the actual embosser itself. Um, but also there is a, a way in the embosser that you can change the layouts where you can have a single line, a double line or single line, and even double spacing. I know that's something like what is a, a frequent request, you know, double spacing. Uh, right. So all of these settings can be set on the embosser. Uh, when you then emboss that from the touch, it will respect those settings. A uh, quick question here from uh, Cara. Will the step-by-step -step instructions be added to the HumeWare Buddy? Do we know? Are they already added? Do we know? I believe I they are. I think they're uh, in there under the index. I, I have to look. They should be yeah. up there, though. Okay, we think they're up they there, Cara. They should be up there. If they're not, they'll be up there today. <laughs> up there today or tomorrow, because I have both. I don't, I'm not sure, though. I need to look. Okay, so let me just... Uh, in my share screen. Okay. Okay, so. Speech on. Can you hear this okay, Peter? Calculator. Uh, calc. Yes, you are golden. File manager. Oh, okay. files. Awesome. So I'm going to be talking about printing. And there are many ways of printing. Uh, we can, of course, print via Bluetooth. So we could use a very similar method that uh, Peter just demonstrated. We can print via wireless. Uh, we can print with Wi-Fi Direct. And lastly, we can print by using uh, the USB cable. So many different methods, and I will uh, explain at least uh, three of those. I mean, the Bluetooth side of things, um, it's very similar method to, to what uh, Peter was talking about. So first of all, you would need to pair the Bluetooth printer. And uh, once you've then paired the Bluetooth printer, you would do exactly the same steps as what Peter just uh, showcased with uh, embossing with obviously a printer but most printers nowadays they don't have bluetooth right but they're actually now um wi-fi or wi-fi direct and of course usb is a, again a, an, an option and in some cases you have to 
you pay extra for a USB cable, which uh, sometimes silly, but nevertheless, uh, everyone has their personal choices. So uh, I'm going to talk about wireless first of all, printing wirelessly. So first of all, um, you need to make sure that your printer is set up for this function. Uh, in some cases, printers are, uh, are not set up, so you'll need to make sure that your printer is registered to your Wi-Fi. So if you're at home or if you're on a school network, it needs to be connected to your wireless connection. Now, in most cases, the printer itself isn't accessible, so you may need to have some, uh, some assistance there. Um, once you have got that set up, the rest of the work is then on the brown note touch itself. So from my main menu, I'm gonna go into my quick settings by pressing enter with uh, Q. Settings, connected devices, Bluetooth, cast. Okay, gonna straight away get into my Android settings. The next uh, section where I need to go is connected devices. So I'm gonna press enter on connected devices. If you're not on connected devices, you can press the letter C, or you could use your space bar to move forward through those uh, options. So enter on connected devices. Connected devices, Bluetooth, not connected. Now in the connected devices, there should be an option with, uh, which is called printing. So I'm gonna press P, printing, printing, one print service on. And I'm gonna press enter. Printing, printing services. Now this is one of the benefits of being on a later platform of Android. Android 8, which is known as Oreo, introduced, um, introduced drivers that, was, that were included in the Android platform. So what this means is, is once I've connected my printer to my wireless network, I then need to try and turn this printer service on. So by default, this service printer. Default print service on. Okay, which is now saying it's on. More than likely, it will be turned off. Okay, so you need to make sure that you turn this on. So I'm gonna press enter on default print service. Default print service, navigate up button. And there will then be an on and off slide switch. So default move, print service. Move forward using my thumb keys here. More options, button, switch on. Okay, so here we have is the switch on and switch off. So at this stage, this is what you'll need to make sure is turned on to then be able to connect to your wireless printers. If it's set off, then you're not gonna be able to print via wirelessly. So that's the first thing. Uh, once you've then set that via wireless, then you'll, you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna do a demonstration here. So my printer's already on, so I'm gonna go. Main menu, contact, key list. I'm gonna to go to the word processor, and there are many methods of printing as well, but this is just one method. I'm gonna to go to my word processor. Word processor, keyword. I'm going to press enter. Alert, a keyword recovery file exists. Keyword did not close discard button. Keyword menu. Okay, I'm just gonna discard that one, and there should be an option in the keyword menu print. So we have embossed, so we have print. I'm gonna choose P for print. Print. I'm gonna press enter. Key files, andrew.docs. And that's now going to take me into my file manager to basically it's prompting me, well, what file do you want to print? So here's where you need to go looking for that file. Uh, remember, we did uh, various methods of navigating in file manager in those web previous webinars. Uh, but I'm currently in my documents folder. I'm going to go to my math document. Math .docs. Here we go. And I'm going to press enter. Edit box. Open with Drive PDF Viewer. Use a different app. So the first thing it's gonna prompt me with is, is open with what type of application. And in all cases, when you're doing any kind of printing at this stage, I'd recommend to open it with your drive PDF viewer. This is a default application that is installed. And again, I'm just gonna choose just Always once. Button. Just once, button. Drive, navigate up, button. This will now present uh, my work in a visual format. So again, this could be pretty good as if, you're, if you need to show your teacher or side of peer um, how your document is going to print, then this is exactly how it's gonna print. So those that are uh, light dependent, you can see the screen. Um, we can see that on my screen, we have fractions and graphs. Um, I have uh, calculations and I actually have a, a graph as well that is uh, being printed. Um, Math.docs.pdf. Are you able to still hear my screen, Peter? Yes. You can? Okay. Fine. Good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is press space with M. Space with M will open up my context menu. Pop up window. And will Send give me file. an option to print. So here there'll be an option to print. Open with. Download. Print. And press enter on print. Loading document. Print dialog. This printer isn't available right now. Expand handle. This printer isn't available right now. Top. Notification, preparing three full stop, preparing three full stop. 
Okay, so it had a, some messages saying the printer was not available, but it should be available. Page one of one. Tick Thinking. bottom. Summary. Cop expand handle. Drop down menu. Epson XP 6100 series. 192.168.0.39. So if it does say no printer at this stage, this is the, the very top of your screen. So if you press space one, two, three at this section, it will take you to um, an option of what printer is selected. If it does say no printer, just simply press enter here and you could then choose Epson XP 6100. You could then choose the printers that are available. Now, in some cases, if you if you're in a, a network environment in school, maybe there are multiple printers at this stage. So just make sure that you connect to the right one. The last thing you want to do is choose the headmaster's printer and print something over there rather than printing at the, 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 the classroom that you should be printing at. So I'm going to choose right. my Epson this, this printer. This is looking on your network, just so everyone knows. This is specific to printers that are available on the wireless network that you are connected to. So enter on my Epson printer. Print dialog. Drop down menu. Epson. At this stage, you can change copies, Expand handle. Uh, all kinds of different options at this stage, but I'm going to go to the print button. The Sorry, print copies button one, somewhere. print button. Okay, here's the print button. I'm going to press enter. Drive, fine. And now that's then going to start communicating, and you may be able to hear this, or you may not, but my printer is now warming up as we speak, and you can probably hear it sort of chiming away and printing. Okay, and there we have it. So I've now printed my document by wireless. Okay, so uh, the other option is, again, another wireless form, but it's called Wi-Fi Direct. So your printer that you have, it may be only compatible with Wi-Fi Direct. Uh, again, in this case, you would need to make sure that Wi-Fi Direct is enabled on the printer. Okay, once it's enabled by the printer, then you'll need to do the rest on the Brown Note Touch Plus. So to do this, again, I'm going to go back to my main menu and start the very main beginning. Main menu, contact, key list. We're going to press enter with Q to get into Android settings. Settings, connected devices, Bluetooth, cast. Now this time, we're going to go into network and internet, not connected devices at this stage, okay? Because we're using a wireless protocol here. We're going to go to our network option. Network and internet, Wi-Fi, data usage. Okay, we're going to press enter. Network and internet. Wi-Fi, SKYAF94. We're going to go into our Wi-Fi options at this stage. Now, although I'm connected to my, my router at this stage, I'm going to press enter to go to my um, U wireless networks. Wi-Fi, refresh list. Okay, now going through this whole list, there will be an option near the bottom called advanced. Desk to direct SK1 to add network. Wi-Fi, save networks, seven networks, bottom. Wi-Fi preferences. I beg your pardon, Wi-Fi preferences. So Wi-Fi preferences, we're going to press enter on Wi-Fi preferences. Wi-Fi preferences. Open network notification. Notify when a high quality public net. Now in this section, this is where we'll have an advanced option. Advanced, install certificates, network rating provider, Wi-Fi direct, WPS push button, WPS. Okay, you heard it there mentioned Wi-Fi direct. I'm going to press enter on advanced. Open network notification. Notify when a high quality public network is installed certificates, network rating, Wi-Fi direct. And we're going to move forward just to the option of Wi-Fi Direct and press Enter. Wi-Fi Direct. Android underscore web. Okay, so at this stage here, um, it, there are options here where you can search for devices, you can rename devices. Uh, but remember, if you're not able to see your, um, your print at this stage, then it's more than likely that you haven't set up uh, the Wi-Fi Direct option within your uh, printer itself. So at this stage here, as I move forward, it's probably this under my... HCA LAP2 remembered groups, direct S9 of Sun XP 6100 series. So this is listed as directed as it's remembered. But this point here, if we go to search for devices, it will be listed. You press enter. You may need to interact, however, with your printer. Okay, that's another, that's another thing to mention here and advise. Again, your printer may not be accessible, um, may not have any speech. So... Uh, it may prompt you to to uh, to press OK in, in some occasion. Can you, I'd recommend yeah, referring it really to user code. And and sometimes too, your printer may have you know depending on with Wi-Fi Direct, which I love. I love Wi-Fi Direct because it works great when you have lots of other printers around. The only issue is you may have you know a, a, a security key 
such like a password to actually connect to your printer's specific network. Wi-Fi Direct is essentially creating its own network with your printer. So you may need to, for instance, I, I use the Office Jet Mobile 200 printer. My default is one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is what I needed to enter. But you need to find that information in your manual and you may need some help might need to pull up some IRA or, or Be My Eyes or something if you're on your own to get some assistance, assistance in terms of interacting with your printer itself to get Wi-Fi Direct going. That's right. Okay, so that is your Wi-Fi Direct. And again, the, the method of printing can be identical to what we've just so, uh, shown you. So you can go to the word processor, you can print. Uh, there's other options. You can print directly from the word processor itself, and you can also print from the um, from the file management side of things as well. So there are various ways of printing once you've got your printer set up. The final piece of printing I was going to mention is USB. Now, in some cases, you may just want to plug in a USB. Unfortunately, it's not that simple uh, when it comes to Android devices and. With Android devices, if you want to use um, a USB way of printing, you will need to install a service plugin. So to install a service plugin, this is where you'll need to go back to that print to service. So again, I'm gonna go back to my main menu. Main menu, contact, key list. I'm gonna to go to my quick settings, which is gonna open up my Android settings, enter with Q. Settings, network and internet, Wi-Fi, data usage. And I'm going to go back into my connected devices. Connected devices. Bluetooth. Cast. And press enter. Connected devices. Bluetooth. Not connected. I'm going to go straight to my printing. So P for printing. Printing. One print service on. And press enter. Printing. Printing services. Now in this option here, we should have an option of add service. I'm going to press the letter A. Add service. Okay, and I'm going to press enter. Play store. App, printer on print service star rating 4.2. So what this now does, it opens up all of this print service plugin applications that are available on the Play Store. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually search for these apps within the Play Store, um, but this is certainly the best and the more efficient way of, of installing, you know, understanding which, which version you need to install. So if you're if you've got an Epson printer, if you've got a HB printer, we just simply navigate to that print plugin. So as I move forward, we'll have App, different options. Print star rating for App, HP print service plugin star rating 4.5. Now I have an Epson one, so if I press the letter E, bottom, uh, may not take me there because it may not be visible on the App, screen. So I'm just going to go forward. App, brother print app, some app, Canon app, Xerox app, Konica main old app, printer share mobile print star app, printer and mobile print star app, Epson print enabler star rating 3.9. Okay, so this one, an Epson print enabler. So this is the one that I would need to install if I want to, to work with a USB. There are other applications there, the printer share mobile print. Some of them are payable. I believe that one is a payable app. But what I would recommend you doing is if you know the printer brand, select that it should be a free service plugin app. Okay, uh, once you've installed that, when you plug in a USB, it should then detect that uh, your printer is connected. Um, each application at this stage is, can be different. I'm not sure what apps you, you've used in the past, Peter. Yeah, so, uh, so one caveat here is the, the word is should, right? It should work. It doesn't mean it will. If you have an old printer, it may not be supported by HP, Epson, via USB. You may have to use a paid app like Hammer Print or Printer Share and actually pay of you know five dollars or something to get your printer recognized via USB if it's really old. So keep that in mind. If if you want to print via USB, you've got to do some problem solving. You've got to do some troubleshooting on your own to determine what print service or what combination of uh, whether it's free or paid will work. Many work just straight away with the you know, USB with the, with the printer service like Epson, HP, Konica, Minolta, Xerox, and so on. But some printers just don't. Uh, we do not have any zero control over that. That is coming from the printer manufacturer if they're going to support it within their plugin. We don't make printers and we don't make printer drivers. What, we, what I can say is with most every printer, even old ones that I've come across, the paid apps do a very good job of making them usable through USB. I think my first course is always wireless printing, 
Wi-Fi direct printing. If that is absolutely 100% not an option, you're going to have to go down one of these roads and, and find a way to do that via USB. And that will require you to play with print services, paid or free. Good stuff. Well, that's, uh, that is it in terms of printing. So just to summarize, we've gone through the process of connecting a printer via the wireless option. So you go to your printer within connected device, make sure that that service plugin, that printer add-on is, is, uh, is turned on. That is actually pre-installed. You just need to make sure that you switch it on. So that's by, by, by far the easiest method. Then we have the Wi-Fi Direct. There is a little more steps involved here, but again, your printer uh, needs to be Wi-Fi Direct enabled. Uh, we then have the USB option, which you need to install a printer add-on, as we just mentioned. And then lastly is a Bluetooth, which um, I'm not sure if my actual printer is Bluetooth compatible. I mean, I believe now that a lot of these new printers that are coming out, they don't, uh, they don't support Bluetooth. Yeah, they've really moved on. Bluetooth is not a reliable source. I mean, mostly the, any new printers today are gonna do Wi-Fi Direct is their preferred method. Wireless is good, but especially in schools or workplaces, wireless leads to misuse and leads to lots of, everyone has access and they, they don't want that. So Wi-Fi Direct is really the new kind of standard for printing uh, primarily, wirelessly at least. Good stuff, right. So All right. we are now heading towards question times, I believe. Anything else we, you need to add, uh, Peter? No, no, I think we'll, we'll take it to question time and uh, we'll, we'll see if there's any questions. Again, we are giving away an hour with a product specialist, so we will do that drawing as well so that somebody can get some assistance with any of our devices. Um, that could be with, with anything, right? Any tasks you need to accomplish, um, getting things on your network, maybe setting up your printer, <laughs> whatever it might be, um, with, with your Braille Note Touch Plus. Um, you know, any, any of that we can work through. So we will get to that. But I think we'll, we'll float to some questions um, okay. and, and we'll see, see how we do. Okie dokie. So I've just uh, also enabled raise the hand. Uh, so right. if you do want to ask live questions, you can do Alt so. Alt-Y on your computer, Option-Y on your Mac. I was told, which is, which is not true, I was told that I've never told anyone how to raise their hand on the uh, iPhone. There is a raise hand button on Android and on iOS that you need to find in the application. Um, if you're looking at your meeting controls, there is a raise hand button. So again, um, and I, I know I've mentioned that several times, but I was, I was reminded a couple times by someone in Human We're Live that I've not ever told anyone how to raise their hand, but I, I, I definitely have. So please listen to those previous episodes. It is, you need to be looking at your, your meeting controls though. A lot of times you might shift and you might leave the meeting and be looking somewhere else. It is in there and I, maybe I can demo it at one of these points, how to find that raise hand button. But there is a way to raise your hand from, much like there is an unmute button. Um, on your Braille Note Touch Plus and on your iPhone, you need to locate them on screen. All right. Okay, All right. let's uh, have a first question here. Uh, so we have a um, question. Hi, I don't have the update for Braille Note. Where is it? So I want to make sure that this new update that was just launched, it is only available for the Braille Note Touch Plus, uh, not the original Braille Note. So if you have got a Braille Note Touch Plus, you should have received a notification, but if you haven't, uh, we gave some prior instructions uh, just at the beginning of the, uh, the webinar, but you go to all applications. So from that main menu, you do the letter A, for all applications, press enter. You then look for key up data. So you can press the letter K until you get to key up data and press enter. And it then will should start to prompt you for checking for new updates. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, and next question we have is uh so this is from Cara. so thank you peter andrew uh you always explain things so they are easy to understand also the hw buddy is so helpful it's great okay love it love it and we're gonna we're going to continue to push and upload and, and fire off content into that app. I have created snapshot tutorial videos for all of these new features in Keysoft. So there are two on the calculator. There is one on one-handed mode, how to turn it on. There's also one on the braille tables. So kind of walking you through how to do that. Um, in addition to written guides for all of that as well. So I and Andrew and I, um, our product specialist team, we're all going to continue to create content to make the most robust 
sort of support structure um, that we can in terms of putting things into the app and then also doing things at Humanware Live. Okay, so uh, Debbie in Ottawa, Canada here. Where can I access past sessions? This was amazing. Debbie, 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 Debbie. If you want to find past sessions, so I, um, you can go to our website. So www.humanware.com. Once you're there, you can click on support. So there is a support link and then click on Humanware Live and you will find all of our past webinars. I walked us through this during one episode as well. I think right at the beginning of an episode, I walked us through where to find it. So you can certainly find all of our archived webinars. We put them there. We also upload them to our YouTube channel. So if you have the HW Buddy app, they are right there under the videos tab. If you have a Victor Reader stream or Trek, so a stream second generation or Victor Reader Trek, we put them in the Victor Reader information uh, podcast feed as well. Okay, uh, so this one's a good question. My student has a Braille note, not a touch. What's the difference? So this, That's this a is a loaded question. Is it a, <laughs> is a, is it a which Braille note? <laughs> is it an yeah, Apex possibly or a big question there. So there is a big difference on, on, uh, from a Braille note, uh, one of the classics or an M power, uh, or an apex, uh, to a, then obviously the, the recent ones, which are the touch and touch plus. So, uh, by all means, if you, if you, if you can certainly be a bit more specific, but there are some major differences, uh, you know, amongst these different Braille notes. Yeah. So if it's an apex, I mean, the, the differences are, are, are very, very wide ranging. You have the ability to work in the connected classroom, the ability to work with cloud-based applications, third-party applications, modern web browsers, uh, modern mail clients, access to lots of current information that's used in today's connected workplace and connected classroom. If it's a touch to a touch plus, the difference is our operating system as well as how we are bringing in books, how we are able to mirror the screen um, to iPhones, to iPads. There, there are, there are there are many, many differences. It... Oh, you cut off there, Peter. I'm not sure if you realized that, but I'll, I'll continue. So basically, there is, there is a lot of differences between certainly the, the, the Brownout Classics, the Apex, and, and then, of course, the Touch. I see some of the uh, responses coming in that uh, it, it's an Apex. Nope, sorry, it's a Touch, not a Plus. A, it would help plus. to know exactly what real note ah. would be. You've just joined back again, Peter. You had about, has... Yeah, you had about a two minute sort of went on silence there. <laughs> I'm back. Um, so, uh, yeah, we just found out that it's actually a touch, um, not the plus. So, uh, and I think some of the questions that came in is, um, you know, is any of this possible with the, the Braille Note Touch, the first one? Um, from a printing point of view, um, the, the printer default options, Lots you know, where, where you have to go to... Uh, the connected devices and printer that is not an option unfortunately within the first on the first brown note touch you will more than likely need to install a third party application okay yes. um, so those applications could be the printer service plugins and again you'll need to search that through the play store itself again i don't think there is an option with the original touch um, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, you have to go through the Play Store to search that because yeah, it's not you'll, an you'll go through the Play Store and then you would enable those. But I think from an original touch standpoint, if you're looking to print, um, depending on how you're trying to do it, your, your best bet is probably going to be to purchase a third party app like Hammer Print or Printer Share. Um, none of this Wi Fi Direct or wireless printing services are built in and they pose. Lots of challenges depending on how you're trying to print. USB printing is primarily what I've come across with the original touch and that you will definitely need some sort of third party application to do that. The embossing is the same. Um, the embossing via Bluetooth is relatively the same process, a little bit of a different in terms of the steps involved because there is, you know, you do that directly from Bluetooth as opposed to going to connected devices and then Bluetooth. But it, the embossing via Bluetooth is possible from the first generation touch. Okay, so is there a means of selecting a printer so that it is, your, it is the default printer? That's yes. A very good question. Yes, so in that drop-down list that Andrew got, your printer that you've, that you've previously used is going to always be there as your default printer. So Andrew's Epson will always be in that drop-down list as his default printer. So when he 
press it when he's in that PDF preview and he opens the context menu and selects print, that is where that printer should always remain. Um, if you're using various apps and third party services, that will change. But when you're using that print dialog, that printer will always remain as the default. If you need to change it, much like your computer, right? Your computer generally works with the last printer you've used. Um, and you, that, that's kind of how that works. So if you need to change it, you can go into that drop down list and change your printer and then, and so on. It will always remember the last one you've used. Thanks, Peter. Uh, okay, question from Fabian. With the Humeware Buddy app, is it available for the Brownout Touch Plus yet? Uh, answer to that is yes, it should be available. Uh, it's on the Android uh, Play Store. So yep. just search for the HW Buddy app. Um, you may need to be specific. Type in HW space Buddy uh, and you should get to the uh, application to install. Uh, okay, next one is... Um, Is there a price today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, there is. There is. <laughs> You'll have to stay tuned. Exactly. We, we will be doing the same thing as last week. So it, we'll put you in touch with a product specialist um, and, and that, will, that will happen. Don't worry. So going back to one of the, uh, you mentioned the question, uh, you know, my student has a brown note, not a plus. How many of these things can work? So we've, we've just explained that one. Uh, okay. And... Question from Sam, where can I find how to download Braille books from the BARD and unzip them? The Unra zip well, has not that would be, do, you're going to have to, uh, we can look at that on a future uh, podcast uh, for sure. I can definitely walk us through those steps. You're going to need a, an unzip client. Um, you could use Chrome to do that. You're, you're definitely referring to Braille books in this case. So you would use the Chrome browser to log into your BARD account. Um, and you would, you would download, again, this is for those of you who are not in the US, this is specific to the United States, um, but this is how you would, you would do it through the web browser. You would download them and then you would unzip them using a third party unzip client like Easy Unrar or something. That is, that is going to be a third party process. Okay, question from Steve. I am switching schools and will require a new embosser. What embosser shall I get to support my computer and my student's Braille Note Touch? So any of the generation five embossers, I mean, I would recommend using either the Juliet 120 because it is double-sided. That gives you that flexibility. Uh, the Index Basic D V5 is also a great choice. The same sort of double-sided, you know, there's graphics options for those. I think those are your best bet. If you need single-sided embossing, the Romeo 60 will do that in terms of tractor-fed embossers. Um, and we'll have all the, the wireless features as well, in addition to graphics and such. So you, those would be my recommendations. If you want a cut sheet embosser, you could certainly do that, meaning page by page, if you wanted something like an Everest. But I would recommend going with, you know, your, your either Romeo 60 or Juliet 120 or Index basic D V five. Okay, Peter. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure the, the next answer to this question is, uh, is a no. Um, is it possible to emboss from a Brownout touch plus to an older embosser such as a view plus tiger club? But I do believe they may, I think view plus may have some kind of add on network thing. Um, I'm not sure if you know much about that one, Peter, but I believe yeah, there's some kind of add on. There may be a dongle. you we would have to check into that. Uh, in terms of just plugging in via USB, the answer is no. You could not just plug it into an embosser and, and, and emboss via USB. If you have an embosser with that dongle um, that View Plus came out with um, to make those, those embossers work on Wi-Fi, it could work in theory. I do not have one of those embossers. So I'm, we would, you know, I would ask, I would definitely encourage you to get in touch with View Plus and find out if that embosser that you have uh, can be made in, you know, given wireless capabilities. And then that, that in theory would work, but we'll, we, we would definitely have you get in touch with View Plus. Yeah, it, it definitely works with the uh, Tiger Box someone was just mentioned. Thank you, uh, Svetlana, Tiger Box. So uh, I do know it does work with the Tiger Box, but uh, as Peter said, just uh, contact uh, View Plus on that. Uh, on regarding the your yeah, I, I don't know on, the, on, the, on that specific one. Okay. Uh, will the Brona Plus work with the View Plus Spot Dot Emboss? Again, similar answer there. If you contact uh, View Plus on that, uh, you may need to have that um, that adapter. 
Okay. Uh, is the Brownout Touch Plus going to receive Android updates? Uh, well, okay. So um, we're continuously, continuously making improvements on, on our product. So we recently just updated the Brownout Touch. Uh, we haven't updated the Brownout Touch uh, or the Android version yet, but um, I say yet, that is something that uh, we can do. And uh, at some point, we, I'm sure we will. Awesome. Okay, so let's go to some of the hands raids now. So let's let's go and listen to our callers. So we have uh, Jasmine Kotze. You love this part, don't you, Peter? When I'm this is my favorite part of the program. <laughs> Jas Andrew, Jasmine the name Kotze. struggler. I love it. Jasmine. Jasmine. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? We are just cruising through our Thursday. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so I have kind of a dumb question. I don't know if this is No such thing. <laughs> so um, as, as people who probably use your printers pretty often, I mean, I don't, I don't really know for sure, but um, I was wondering, do you guys leave your printers on or do you turn them off and then turn them on as needed? That's a great question. That's a, that's a really good. So, so I think there, you know, really it comes down to personally, I, I leave my embosser on. Um, there is no, I don't think there's, there's a right or wrong answer there. I think it's preference. I don't like to have to wait. So if you know, let's say you're in a school, um, it might make sense to turn it off over the weekend or to turn it off overnight, but you'll mm -hmm. probably leave it on throughout the day or in your office or much like you would with any other printer. Um, I think, you know, it, it won't make a difference. Definitely, if you know you're going to be embossing, you sometimes don't want to wait the minute or two to have the thing come on and get ready to rumble. So I would, I would encourage you to leave them on, but certainly if you don't want to be wasting electricity or you know you're not going to be using it for a while, uh, turning them off overnight or over the weekend would be, would be what I'd recommend if, if you know you're not going to be using them. But just that habit of turning them on every morning, just so that they're ready to go when you're ready to. What about the actual printer? Not not necessarily the embosser, because I don't have one yet. I have to. Like like a regular printer? I just yeah. leave mine on all the time. Yeah, but again, that's me. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to. I'm sure <laughs> there are folks out there who turn them off. I leave my printer on. I think I have one printer that's probably been on for six years. And I've just never turned it off. Oh, geez. Um, okay. It's, it's just a personal kind of, question, isn't it? I think I know my dad is very, uh, you know, when it comes to like having a television, for example, he, he doesn't put it on standby. He actually likes to turn it off from the mains to, to save yeah. a bit of power. But I mean, imagine if you, it's a printer that's wireless and you're downstairs and uh, you then need to print, you're going to have to go all the way upstairs if your printer's right. up there to turn it on. So, and that's like my wife, you know, we, we have in our, our house, I mean, we have Wi-Fi printing and stuff. And so, We'll, we'll, my wife will be sitting on the couch or, or somewhere and just want to print a shopping list or print. And she doesn't, for us, it wouldn't make sense for her to go up and turn it on and then print. She just knows that when she walks upstairs, that piece of paper will be printed out for her. So oh. I think it's personal preference. You won't hurt your printer by leaving it on. Um, but okay. it's up to you. Perfect. Your call. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next one then we have is Linda Myers. Hello, Linda. Linda, Linda, you are on the air. If you need to unmute, you might want to press Alt A. If you yeah. are on, there you go. You're Thank good. you. Um, I asked my question on chat already. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. Thanks, Linda. All right. Okay. So the next one we have is Mary Carla Hayes. Fire. Oh, your hand went down. <laughs> Mary Carla Hayes. There you go. Okay, there we go. Um, I have uh, two questions. First is an almost, almost an embarrassing one. I have an old, and I mean, this is an old embosser. It's a Versa Braille Plus. And I was wondering if, if there was any way of tricking my brand new Braille Note Touch Plus into printing with it or embossing with it. So the, the one word short answer is no. But what you could do, so if, if you want to use that embosser, you can certainly get content to it. You're just, you're going to have to use a Braille translator. Um, you're going to have to use something that can send a BRF file to that embosser. 
whether that's Duxbury, whether that's Braille Blaster, which is free from the American Printing House for the Blind, um, whether that is, you know, Braille 2000, you can certainly get, you know, a file to a, you, you're going to need to use a computer. You need to get a Braille translator. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So I can't just plug in. There's no adapter or dongle no, or anything that I can do with There is no, that. no, not for, not for those embossers, not to my knowledge. The Versa Braille, I, I am 99.315282% sure, <laughs> which leaves a little room for me to be totally wrong. I always like to do that, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, you're going to need to use a Braille translator. I would recommend that you, you know, if, if you have a computer uh, to get something like Braille Blaster to quickly translate those documents. But Okay, and then the you, other question that I'm, I know you can't answer this um, quickly, is there an opportunity or a chance, you've just told us that these new updates are available, and I am a brand new Braille Note Touch user, and I'm sure other people are too. Is there time during one of these webinars that you can walk us through the update pos in a um, process so that we can see how it happens and how to get the release notes and all sure. of that? first-time users? Yeah, we can add, we can do that next week. Um, Thank you. Certainly, I can. we can show how to update. I'll find a way to, Andrew, you're going to have to help me do some back uh, backsliding, and then we can walk yeah, through yeah. that update process. Because it is, it is very, um, it, it's definitely something that's very doable, and, and we can walk through it. Uh, just so you know, your release notes are in Key Updater. So if you go okay. into Key Updater, your release notes are there. Um, and I, I will walk everyone through that, but yes. Okay, so in advance of that, I haven't done this yet. Should I install the Buddy app on my Ch Touch Plus? You, you don't have to. I mean, it, if you want to, you certainly can. If, if you think it would be a good resource, I would strongly recommend that you listen to the audio tutorial for Mystic Access, which is 15 hours long and can really get you going. Anybody out there. Um, we oh, have yes. I've been listening. There's nothing for the buddy there, I don't think. No, not yet. But I, you know. I would strongly encourage anybody to take advantage of those audio tutorials. Okay. The buddy app is nice because then you, you would easily have access to our, to our videos and things like that. But you don't need it to, to update. But I'll, I will walk through, through the process. But is that going to be part of the process you walk through? And would it be advantageous to have it pre-installed? Or are you going to tell us how to? No, that's just a third-party app. I'm not going to talk okay. about that updates automatically in the background. This is okay. Keysoft. So I will walk everyone through the Keysoft update. Okay, thank you. And I do enjoy these. Thank you so much. You are no so problem. Thank you for, for coming. Okay. So All right. A couple Thanks more. So. And then we'll okay. Do our... okay, we have... We have Natalia. 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 <laughs> Rock and roll. There we go. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yes, Natalia. Okay. Excellent. Sweet. Um, I wanted to say uh, thank you for the updates. I got it yesterday and I'm really excited. And I wasn't, I read the newsletter also. Um, it came to my email, but I wasn't sure what the uh, human wear buddy update was, but I have it on my touch. So now that you've explained it, I'm going to go update that soon as well. Um, and uh, I wanted to ask about, I had one question related to touch braille, if that's all right. Sure, sure. Um, I've noticed that with my touch, uh, periodically I have an issue where I'm typing in touch braille and I have to recalibrate my fingers and that's fine. And I attempt to recalibrate, but it doesn't do it. Um, it. 18 uh, charging 31 minutes until full. It, Touching. Bluetooth on. Once what? It, it sort of makes it like my, how do I explain it? My fingers are sort of all one dot. So I have dot one and dot four that I have separate and then dot dot five and six which would be obviously for my um for my what would that be my ring and i'm not looking at it right now um but it, it makes it into all sort of like it's all one all one dot um so dot enter is not available uh and backspace is not available dot Five and six dot six is sometimes 
there and dot five is sometimes there, but when it's it, like, it makes it, when I press a P, I, I know I'm pressing the letter P, but it thinks I'm pressing G and it won't allow me to press P. And I've not really found a way to. What, what, what resolves it, Natalia? What do you have to do to resolve that? Uh, sometimes, well, the easiest way I found to resolve it is use the Braille, lower the, the, the Braille keyboard and sometimes typing on it for a couple of seconds or uh, just lowering the Braille keyboard and then raising it back up and uh, then- Yeah, because I, I would suggest, I mean, again, touch Braille, you will find even, even our best Braille users. I've used, you know, Braille since I was four years old. And yeah, I, so 20, me, I, me 20 something yeah. years. And, you know, it, it, there is absolutely, I don't care if you're using Braille screen input or touch Braille, there's always going to be some, some, some shadiness there and, and lagginess at times. I mean, it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of working directly on the glass. But what I would suggest you do when you're noticing, if, if you're just noticing you're getting lots of inconsistencies, so you calibrate and you're thinking, okay, I don't know, and you calibrate again and again, maybe two or three times, and you're just, it's not playing nice. Yeah. I would suggest you turn Keysoft off and turn Keysoft back on. Okay. And even with voiceover, I've noticed lately, you know, I'll be swiping through something, my phone will slow down tremendously in certain mm -hmm. applications and mm -hmm. just go nuts. And I have to either turn voiceover off and on or sometimes restart my phone. And it, I think that's what it sounds like. I don't, because it, okay. the only way we can really address something like that is if you say, you know, every time I'm in this particular document doing this particular thing, if we can yeah. recreate it, we can fix it. So right, if you right. really pay attention and, and see if you can recreate that each time and let us know we are, we can absolutely fix it. If we can right. reproduce it, we can. I, it's been in keyword every time that I've had this problem. It's always been in keyword. I know that. Well, um, and I would think that's because you're extensively typing in keyword. So Correct. that would be but why, I've been right? Before and such also, and I've never had it happen there. Right. Um, so I, I would, I would turn Keysoft off and on. Okay. Uh, certainly, give that a whirl, yep. and I would, I would definitely try if possible. How often do you do you restart your unit? Uh, well, when this happens, I restart it. I restart it. Period. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that happens with it is sometimes it won't allow me to recalibrate my fingers um, when this is going on. Like I, yeah, I would, I would definitely. And again, if it's something that's going on and on, I mean, that'd be something you'd want to get in touch with, with support on to see if, if there's something we need to do with it. Um, but I, I would strongly recommend turning Keysoft off and on and seeing okay. if that recalibration will, will fix it. And, and if, if there's something that. that's reoccurring, that's really, you know, if it's happening, all the time then we need to figure out what's going on and we can see yeah so. yeah it was for a couple of weeks there it was happening a lot and then it's it hasn't been happening sure. um the last couple of days so but cool. I'm, well we'll see i give it a whirl and see, exactly. see what happens yeah, no I'll, I'll try turning keys off on and off again thank you very much rock and roll thank you okay. all right we'll do one more andrew and then we'll do our drum okay. roll free drawing sure okay so we have uh derek and I'm not going to even attempt to the surname here. <laughs> Derek, you are on. Derek. Hello. Hi, Derek. Fire. How do you pronounce your surname? Um, uh, how do I really like to? It's kind of the... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> All good. What's um, up? So um, I have a question. So my teachers over at my school were apparently able to install like... Um, Apparently from my Braille Note Touch Plus, I can print from any USB drive with like a printer. Mm -hmm. Well, um, if you were starting out on a new Braille Note Touch Plus, would you have to install some like new driver to do that? Or, or, or would it already be installed already? So you're saying they, they, they have something where you can, you can just plug a thumb drive into a printer no, at the school? No, like plug the USB drive into it and print from there. Is it, um, is it possible to do that? No, no you out? have to copy it to your touch. You need to copy it into the storage drive. I mean, like, no, if you're, like, installing the USB drive from the port, like, from the printer, like, you were going to print it, like, regularly, not, like, oh, wirelessly? Uh, you, it, if you have the same brand, it should work. It just depends on the printer model. 
It really um, will depend on the model. So if it's an HP and you already have it on, generally it should work, but it, it really, 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 there are, there are not even thousands. I mean, there are tens of thousands of printer models over the last, let's say 30 years. So it's really going to depend. If it's, if it's the same brand in general, if you have the printer plugin installed, you should be fine, but it's okay. really hard to know without knowing the specific printer. Okay. So it should work if you just plug the USB port from the printer into your if it's the same brand, um, if it's the same brand of printer, you have a mm -hmm. good shot at it if you already have that print service installed. Okay, all right. If not, we'll have to take it through tech support or take it through different ways and we'll, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, okay. Derek. All right. Okay, so uh, shall we draw the winner? Draw yeah. the winner of, so the prize, uh, just talk about the prize, Peter. So we, as we did last week, the prize will be an hour of one-on-one -on -one undivided attention with either Rachel Feinberg or Joel Zimba or possibly myself, depending on what your needs are. Um, so Rachel Feinberg is a product specialist out in the Bay Area. She's on the West Coast time here in the States. Joel is out East. I am in the middle. Um, it will really depend on what the, um, you know, what the, what the, what your needs are. So I will get in touch with you and we will, we will determine that and then we'll, away we go. Okay. So the winner, and I'm just trying to search is Margaret Fields. Um, Margaret was online and is no longer with us. Uh, so unless you're on a, a call, so Margaret, if you're on a call, maybe, um, you please try and raise your hands. I'm going to lower all hands. So, Margaret, if you are one of the callers on a mobile phone or, or a, another device, then please raise your hand. If not, Margaret Fields. Otherwise, we go to we go to participant number two. Okay, Margaret. Yes, you do. We do want you to be here, just so that we can. It would be six 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 possibly, Andrew. Uh, well, there is a. Okay, I'm gonna. There is, uh, I'm going to lower hands again. So the Brady BI32, Brown Knight Touch 6666. I'm going to lower the hands. Just again, one more, one more go. So Margaret Fields, if you are here in the room, raise your hands. Nope. Not? No, Margaret. Okay. Sorry, Margaret. Okay, we're going to go to the next one who is here. And the winner is Fabian. Fabian. You are the Rock winner, and, roll, and you want to talk? Will... There you go. Hands up. Hands Hello, up. you're mute. Unmute. Rock and roll. How's it going, Fabian? Hey. Awesome. Are you? Are you? Um. Are you in the states? Yes, uh, I'm in Spain. Obviously, in Florida. Beautiful. Rock and roll, man. Did we meet you when we came to the school for the blind? Um, you might have. I. I that's why I work actually. Awesome. Do you work with? Okay, cool. That's awesome, dude. Well, I will, I will send you an email to the email that you use to register and I'll put you in touch with, with Joel and I, and we can figure out if there's something that you want some help with. If you, anything, we'll just, we'll, we'll rock and roll. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Sounds awesome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for cruising through some human we're live, uh, episodes, man. Yeah. I think you win a prize for one. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to win a prize hopefully as we move forward we get back and have some some new types of prizes too because we did our we did our streams we're doing this we'll, we'll we'll change it up at some point we'll see what goes on so i will be in touch fabian and we will um we will go from there all right thank you thank you so much all right okay. let's take another that's awesome another winner we've had we uh we're, we're, we're cruising through these prize giveaways let's do two more questions Two more Two questions. More. Okay, let's have a look. So we have uh, Christian. Hello, Christian. Christian, rock and roll. Hey, Peter, can you hear me? Sure can, buddy. How are you? I'm doing good. How's everything over there in in the windy city of Chicago? That's true. It's good. Intro. It's uh, it's it's going good. Not so windy, but very hot. I'm sure it's hot down in Texas too. Yes, it is. I'm actually standing outside right now, and it's pretty hot out here. Awesome. So, what can we help you with? So I was just kind of wondering, so you mentioned graphics with those embossers. 
So if you hook it up via Bluetooth, so if you were to hook up a basic DV5 via Bluetooth and you go to create a graph within KeyMath, can you use the enter with IN command to emboss that graphic if it's, if it's hooked up through Bluetooth? Or how so, would you go about embossing? So there's no that? graphics translator on the Bluetooth side. If you want to emboss a graphic from KeyMath via Bluetooth, you would do that by pressing enter with I and do it through USB. So there, we have a program called Key Graphics that lets you send those graphs or images, right, that are, that are created. You can even like something that's been created in Windows Paint. Um, you could send it to the embosser through Bluetooth and you would use Key Firebird Mobile. So Firebird Mobile is what does that. And that's done through USB. And, and that's something I know we have, um, we have demos, we have snapshot tutorials that will that kind of walk people through that. But that's a different sort of piece because it's using Firebird Mobile. And that's- I thought that was only available for the enabling embossers. Did that, or, or did that also work with the index embossers also? It's or? only for the Juliet 120 and the Romeo 60. So as of right now, that's where that stands. That doesn't mean it always will, but that's where we are right now with that. So it's specific to the Romeo 60 and the Juliet 120 in terms of USB graphics embossing. All of the embossers support graphics. So the, the index, the enabling, um, any of those V5 embossers, they do support graphics. They just, from the Braille notes, touch and touch plus specifically, that will only work with the Juliet 120 and the Romeo 60. But all of the embossers can support graphics from a computer, depending on your graphics creation software. So, so with those other embossers, could you technically emboss graphics via Bluetooth? So like if you like save the, so like if you go to like export your graphic from KeyMath into Keyword and you save that file as a .docs file, would that work if you go to KeyMath? No, files because Braille graphics involved. require graphics creation software. So you would have to use, and, and it's not very accessible to, to us as blind people, you would have to use a program like Firebird or like Tactile View or there are, there are graphics creation programs that work on computers that Brailleists will use or TVIs or anybody will use to create graphics. There are also predetermined images, like if you went through, if you want to get some of your own samples, you could get them through the American Printing House or there are image libraries that are out there, but that's really done on a computer. Graphics creation is, is very much something Braille, you know, for embossing and Braille graphics is done, is done primarily through the PC. And it's not done through Bluetooth. Yeah, and also, will this Zoom link, will it work for each week or would I have to like register every week? Register each week. Static link. Yep, you I want to register each week because uh, we want to, in order to win a prize, we need, we need to have the active registrants available. So that's why the links that are sent out on Monday as part of the Humanware Live um, you know, the, the newsletter that goes out, or you can go to our website and find the links there under the support page under Humanware Live. They're also shared on Facebook, but you do need to register to receive the link to actually attend. They used to be will, the same link, but until we, then we started giving away prizes, so we do need people to register. I will be back again next Thursday, and I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, so I will. Rock and roll, Christian. So Thanks for being here. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. We'll do one more. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. All right, Andy, one more. I have no Wi-Fi. Hello? Sorry, everyone, I'm back. I, I think 
all of our Wi-Fi <laughs> is terrible. Um, I don't even know if Andrew's still here. I am still here, and I will take one more question. Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, I was on mute myself. Yeah, so this is Mar so Marcy. You're, you're next, Marcy. Oh. Sorry, and, and I didn't hear who you went to. My Wi-Fi failed, so go I ahead, Marcy. Un is it unmuted? Yes, you were yes. good. Okay. Yes. Okay, I know this is going to sound weird, but we have a Juliet uh, Pro, uh, God, 60. Uh, it's old. Mm -hmm. Is there any way at all that we can do anything so that I can use it? I have a Braille note touch plus. You you would have to use a Braille translation software on a computer, much like oh, the person the, who had the Versa no, we, Braille. We already have. We have Duxbury. So, yes. so, yeah, so you could certainly use it. What you would need to do, though, is you would need to save a file or email a file to yourself or get it to your computer. And oh, you could certainly yeah, no, it. I, I've, I've done that. <laughs> There's no way to get that thing to going. Do it direct. Yeah, there's no way to get that thing going direct. It's too old. There's no Android drivers. There's no internal translation on it. And my printer is an HP. It's an HP. Um, it's got it's got a scanner and a printer. Mm -hmm. One of those combined things. It is USB. So I have to hook the USB port into my USB uh, yeah, you, drive, and then you're gonna want to install the HP service plugin which Andrew ran through, you'll do that through printing, okay. through printing and add okay. service, get the HP print okay. service plugin, make sure it is on. And then you're going to want to try to print that way. The, the okay. other choice you would have would be to purchase an app like hammer print, which would certainly work through USB um, with pretty much any printer, but that's a $5 application. But I would try it first with the print service plug in and see how that goes in terms of getting the HP plug in yeah. and trying to see if it will recognize it. Um, we, we don't want to, we don't want to spend thousands of dollars to get a new printer. No, it, yeah, uh, there's no, no. It, you, I mean, in Boston, it, it costs so much money. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you can, you can you can emboss with that for sure. You'll just have to use your Duxbury. So you'll you'll create files on your touch, save them to a thumb drive, oh, or put them. Yeah, you know, to your I've done that. To I've done that before. <laughs> yep. I was just trying to. Oh uh, yeah, um, life is interesting. <laughs> um, thank you, though. I thank you. I, I wish there was some way I could do something with my printer, though. I used to be able to. Um, uh, with one of my old Braille note somethings, but I think it was ways back. Yeah, a, the, the Empower, or, right, those would work with some of those older ones. It doesn't mean at some point that there wouldn't yeah, be some I way. I just, right. You would need uh, to have a way to get that. To I've get been all the way through translator. all of them, Apex and Empower, and way back to the Braille note at the beginning. That's awesome. Rock and roll. Well, thank you for being here. Okay. All right, Andy. Let's uh, call it a day. We will be back next Thursday with another episode of Human We're Live. And please remember, if you have suggestions for topics, please feel free to send them to live at humanware.com. Oh, goodbye, everyone. Bye, everybody.